Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to do a video that acts both as a tutorial, a basic tutorial, uh, as well as a uh, an applications video for my current Kickstarter campaign, which is the RFID 123. And we'll get to an example in just a second. But what we've got here is a DC solenoid. Now, a DC solenoid is a uh, a little unit, typically has a spring on it, comes with a... Uh, basically uh, a base and a plunger. And the plunger typically a lot of the time has a spring on it. And what this is, is it's essentially just a magnet. So when you apply 12 volts across the two leads, it creates a magnetic field within the base because it's just a coil of wire. They typically take quite a bit of current to drive. And what happens is it, that magnetic field pulls the plunger down so it can act as a lock. When the 12 volts is uh, disconnected from it, the plunger comes back up. Uh, in any case, you can find these on eBay. Uh, certain sites have them. And I'm going to show you how to use the RFID-123 to drive one. I'm also going to show you just how, essentially, how to drive one with a relay. Now, you can use FETs. If you're going to be driving a high-powered relay for a long period of time, you'd use a FET, and you'd use what's called pulse width modulation. But I'm not going to get that to that today. I'm just going to talk about how to easily drive one with a relay. Now, the RFID-123 comes with two onboard relays, so you can activate the relays using a uh, using an RFID card, a very specific programmed RFID card. Uh, anyway, so what we've got here is we've got our DC solenoid, the two wires coming from it. They're just, in this case, they're just two blue wires, there's no polarity, just a coil of wire. Uh, we've got a diode, and we've got our relay contacts. Now, relays, uh, the relays that come with the RFID-123, they are single pole double throw and so there's three output pins it's a, basically a high powered isolated switch a switch that's isolated from the rest of the RFID 123 circuitry and it's got three pins common CO NC which is normally closed and normally open so by default when the relay is off these two pins the common and the NC pin are connected internally when the relay is turned on the common pin disconnects from the normally, normally closed pin and connects over to the normally open pin so what we got here is essentially 12 volts fed through the solenoid base, which is just a coil of wire, through to the NO pin. So basically we, we don't have a circuit here yet. But once the relay is turned on, uh, basically what happens is these two connect together. So we've got 12 volts fed through the coil of wire in the solenoid base, through the common pin, through the, uh, sorry, through the normally open pin to, to the common pin of ground. So then we've properly applied 12 volts to the solenoid which will act the plunger to be sucked in for as long as you've got it uh, uh, basically as long as that relay is on. Now uh, what we've got here is a it's just a diode. We're going to use a 1 and 4001 diode and what this diode does is it protects the other circuitry um, on the same line. Now you wouldn't you wouldn't use the same power supply for the RFID 1 through 3 because that requires 9 volts not 12 volts. But uh, what the diode does typically, and you'd actually see a diode on the relay on the board, is when you when you um, charge or energize a coil of wire, an inductor, and you de-energize it. So when the relay is turned off, what happens is the coil of wire emits a spike of electricity because the magnetic field is collapsing. And what this diode does is ensures that that spike never reaches any voltage above 12 volts. Now those spikes. That I'm talking about, uh, they're actually used in in buck boosters. You use a uh, you you pulse a um, uh, a current through an inductor constantly, and it, what it does is it, it creates these high powered spikes, and you can actually harness that to boost voltage. But that's again a whole other story. In any case, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect this DC solenoid to 12 volts. We're going to place the cathode, the negative of the diode, to the 12 volt line the anode, the positive of the diode, to the secondary coil uh, wire of the, the, the DC solenoid base. And we're going to connect that wire to our normally open pin, and we're going to connect our ground, li our ground line to our common pin. And then what we're going to do is we're going to program an RFID card, and uh, when we activate that relay, uh, what will happen is, again, the common pin will switch, connect internally to the normally open pin, and 12 volts will flow through the solenoid base, so through the coil of wire internally, 
through the, to the normally open pin to the common pin and ground, completing the circuit, energizing the solenoid. Then we'll uh, take the same RFID card and use it to turn the solenoid off. So here's the base. This is a 12 volt solenoid. <clears throat> and I've got a diode in parallel with the two wires here. And I'm not sure if you can see from here, but there's a little white stripe on the t on the uh, top wire here, on the diode right here. And that white stripe indicates the cathode or the negative. So we're going to connect actually the negative side to the 12 volt line. If we reverse this, what would happen is 12 volts would flow directly through the diode and cause a short circuit when the relay was turned on. So this isn't acting as a flow diode. It's acting as a, a blocking diode relative. It's, it's blocking the uh, that pulse I just talked about. In any case, I'm going to connect 12 volts here and I'm going to connect this side to the uh, to the normally open pin and I'm going to connect the common pin to ground and of course I'll place this the plunger in here so that when it's activated active activated deactivated active activated deactivated so let's hook it up to the RFID 123 so this is relay 1 I've got it uh, enabled using this little relay, uh, jumper here on the uh, basically it's just a short on the R1 pins I've got ground connected to the common pin labeled CO on relay 1 terminal block. I've got the solenoid connected to one wire to 5 volts and the other wire to the normally open pin, the NO pin on relay 1. And so basically this card is programmed in for output number 5 which controls relay number 1. So I'm just going to use this specific card and as you'll know what you'll notice is I'm actually going to hold the relay down and I'll place the card over top of the antenna. Now basically because there's no stopper here I'm going to have to put my finger in front of it so it doesn't go flying out because there is that little spring on the side so that deactivates it. So you can make a little lock. Activate and deactivate. Last time. So that's it very easy to implement you just have to find a good DC solenoid I'm using an external power supply the RFID uh, 123 requires 9 volts at 1 amp it doesn't actually take that much but that's the power supply I suggest and that I uh, implement I include in many of the reward tiers for the Kickstarter again listed below so I'm using a different power supply to power the uh, to power the solenoid and the relays Again, they're just high-powered switches controlled by digital circuitry in this case, uh, but the switches, the switch aspect of them are completely isolated from the rest of the circuitry. So we're just using that to switch power on and off to the solenoid. In any case, uh, I hope you found this useful. If you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, it's linked below. I appreciate you watching, guys. Take care and have a great day.